Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, New York, the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship second round. We'll be joined in just a few moments by student athletes from Stephen F. Austin, as well as head coach Brad Underwood. The student athletes joining us will be Thomas Walkup, Trey Pinckney, and Demetrius Floyd. Those student athletes not joining us here in the main interview room will be available for interviews for a 30 minute time period in the Stephen F. Austin locker room. We'll do our best to tell you when Stephen F. Austin and Notre Dame open and close their locker rooms. We'll let you know as best as we can for that. If you're joining us in the main interview room, just a reminder, please silence your cell phone. Please refrain from the use of any flash photography. Please refrain from shooting any video, including social media video or any video that involves using your phone. You're permitted to do that in the locker rooms and in the hallways, but not in this room at all. No Vine videos, no Instagram videos, no Snapchat videos or any other kind of video in this room. And if you have any questions about that, you can ask the representatives from Hammond Communications or you can come up and ask me as well. Speaking of Hammond Communications, if you need the satellite info, please visit one of the Hammond Communications professionals in the back. There is a satellite specialist ready to provide all of those details. I have them as well up here. If you want to catch us during a break for the satellite info, it's the same as it's been all weekend long. Following the news conference with Stephen F. Austin, student athletes and head coach Brad Underwood will have the news conference for Notre Dame. Head coach Mike Bray will be joined by student athletes VJ Beecham, Zach August and Rex Fluger. They'll be in here with us in the main interview room. The student athletes from Notre Dame that will not join us in the main interview room will be available in the Notre Dame locker room. Again, we'll do our best to let you know when that opens and closes. Stephen F. Austin has arrived. The Lumberjacks locker room is now open. Student athletes not joining us in the main interview room are available in the Stephen F. Austin locker room at this time. We're joined now by Stephen F. Austin student athletes Thomas Walkup, Trey Pinckney, and Demetrius Floyd, as well as head coach Brad Underwood. We'll ask Coach Underwood to give us an opening statement, then we'll take questions first for the student athletes. Oh, I've been dreading this moment for, for a long time. Um, 
So if I get emotional, I apologize. And that's who I am. <clears throat> a lot of credit to Notre Dame. Uh, they made the plays when they had to make the plays. Um, it's, uh, it's what a good basketball team, one of the final 32 teams in the country, uh, does. Um, I thought the first half, it was, it was more about us uh, and, and some of the mistakes that we made. We didn't play our best half. Uh, we knew how good their numbers were offensively, uh, and, and yet, um, uh, you know, I thought that uh, I thought Beecham really hurt us, and, and 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 we didn't rotate very well out of our ball screens, which we normally do. Our ball screen coverage, I think, we only forced four turnovers the first half, uh, compared to nine the second half. That was a big difference, uh, but um, uh, I think once we got settled down and, and we got into the second half. Uh, and we got into flow offensively. I think it was a little bit better. Uh, Demetrius got going, uh, made a few shots for us, and, and I can't say enough about Thomas. And, and uh, I thought T.J. Holyfield and Ty Charles, after uh, literally not getting to play in the first game due to foul, uh, foul problems, were, were excellent tonight. But uh, um, again, all the credit in the world goes to, uh, goes to Notre Dame. Uh, they made the play, and uh, ironically, we we lost on something that um, we take a great deal of pride in, and that's um, we do a very good job of ourselves as, as offensive rebound. But uh, very tough day, very emotional locker room. Uh, these these are three of the five seniors uh, that are the winningest players. Uh, Trey and Tom, the winningest players in the history of our program. Uh, they've set a new standard for SFA basketball. They've set a culture for SFA basketball. For that, I will be forever grateful. And and. Uh, as hard as today is, uh, I think it's extremely important that each of these young men walk away with their head held high, uh, not just being proud for who they are, but, but proud of what they've done at Stephen F. Austin um, and, uh, and the way they've represented our school. But a, a very, very, very difficult day. We'll take questions now for the student athletes from Stephen F. Austin. Student athlete questions only first. If you have a question, please raise your hand. One of our microphone attendants will make his or her way in your direction. Questions for Stephen F. Austin. We have one all the way up front, all the way to the right. Sure, this is for all the players. Just your emotions when you see that last tip and go in after the first two shots had missed from Notre Dame. We'll ask Thomas to take that first, then Trey, then Demetrius, please. Um, extremely tough. Um, so I have to say, it's, uh, Ball we should have should have came up with after the first one and uh, it's tough tough to go through. Yeah, like what Tom said, it's, it's it's really hard, and it's something that we preach is finishing plays, and for that to be the way that we lost, it, it it's hard. Yeah, kind of what Trey said, just uh, boxing out, but uh, we ain't get it, and normally we come up with the ball, but we ain't get it that time. So. Continuing with questions, let's go to the right side and Mike. Mike Picaro, New York Post, for any of the three of you or all of the three of you. The rest of us who maybe don't follow you as closely as some get charmed by a, a low seed beating a high seed as you guys did the other night and playing you know, one of the most famous names in college sports, Notre Dame, to the final horn. But for you guys, I mean, is it important, is it, is it important for you guys that we see you guys as a, a really good team who played a really good game against another really good team? And let's have Thomas, Trey, and Demetrius answer in that order. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that's what this tournament's all about, is, uh, you know, for men majors to get in here and, uh, you know, beat these high majors. And, um, you know, that's what makes make the, the tournament so fun is the upsets. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, that's what you know, made it a blast for us. Yeah, it's, um, I think it's also important because it just shows the amount of work that we put in to our season over the course of the year and that hard work hard work pays off so being at this stage is, is really an honor. Yeah, playing a team like Notre Dame, that's a blessing. Always. Continuing with questions for the student athletes from Stephen F. Austin. There's one all the way to the back toward the right. Yeah, John Furlong, WFUV Radio. Uh, considering you guys have played your last game in a SFA uniform, what are you guys going to miss most about it? Let's have Thomas, Trey, and Demetrius take that. Uh, the brotherhood, just uh, 
being around these guys? Yeah, um, our togetherness was incredible. And just the heart that we all that we show and just we're a big family and we miss that a lot. Yeah, just being around about, uh, the team, like uh, Tom said. Continuing with questions for Stephen F. Austin. We have one on the aisle to the right side. Max, go ahead. Max Bonsetter, Sports Illustrated for Kids. Um, this is for all three players. Um, it was an excellent season, and you guys definitely played your hearts out, even though it was a difficult loss. How much better did you guys become by playing together over the past four years? And let's have Thomas address that first, then Trey, then Dimitri. Um, incredible. Um, you know, whenever I came to SFA, I hadn't dreamed of uh, winning games in the NCAA tournament. It was just about getting here and, and being part of the show. So, uh, you know, come in with Trey and uh, do what we did in the time we were here. It's extremely special. Uh, something to hold on to for forever. Yeah, to piggyback what Tom said is extremely special. Coming in together and like growing together. I mean, on the court, off the court, knowing each other's tendencies. It's, it's something that we'll remember for the rest of our lives. And kind of like what Coach said earlier, becoming the winningest players is, is a blessing and that it's something that you just can't take away from somebody. Yeah, coming in SFA and then going to the NCAA tournament and making it this far, it's always a blessing. We have time for one or two more questions for the student athletes. If there is one, please raise your hand. Any final question for the student athletes from Stephen F. Austin? Okay, we'd like to thank Thomas, Trey, and Demetrius for joining us here in the main interview room. They're going to head back to the locker room, which is still open for another 15 or so minutes. We'll now take questions for Coach Underwood, and the first one's going to come toward the back on the right side for Mike. Coach Mike Vicaro, New York Post. I'd like to ask you the same question I asked your players. I mean, we all get charmed by the idea of a low seed and ups making these upsets, but for you, having been around these kids, you couldn't have been as surprised as the rest of us were for what you did on, on, on uh, Friday and how you competed today. I mean, is it important for you to leave that legacy for these kids that it's just, it's just another good team playing another good team as opposed to you know, some kind of charming you know, upstart? Well, I think we prove we belong. And I, and I think that this team has, has known they belong um, all year. Uh, the improvement that this team made is is, is dramatic because it, it, I mean, we started a true freshman in TJ Holyfield and it took us a little while to get our chemistry right but uh, I would not discredit Thomas Walkup and Trey Pickney those two in particular in any way by saying they didn't belong or that no matter what the name on the front we don't care what the name on the front of the uniform says and I and I don't mean that in disrespect to Notre Dame or to anybody we play uh, I know how hard those young men work. Uh, Thomas Walkup proved he's as good as any player in this tournament, and as there is in the country. And that young man's done it with hard work. And, and uh, uh, there's no, I mean, we're, we're one point away from the Sweet 16. And one, one defensive rebounder, one basket, one possession, however you'd like to look at it. And uh, uh, I don't think there's any question, uh, beating VCU two years ago, uh, had our opportunities last year against Utah. I, the name doesn't mean anything. Stephen F. Austin is here to stay, and and uh, we've got good players, and 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 uh, uh, the job that these guys have done is establishing a culture has made it very special. Continuing with questions for Coach Underwood, if you have a question, please raise your hand. In the back row, Coach John Walters from Newsweek. Um, seconding just what you said, I think Thomas Walkup played as well as anybody in the nation this weekend. Can you talk to us about his evolution from when he arrived? to now uh, and just how much he has improved? Well, two points a game as a freshman and um, uh, really a positionless player uh, because he physically didn't have the strength that he has now. Uh, the one thing that we do is we lift weights at a, at a um, it's, it's a big part of our program and, and the growth of our program. Uh, that has allowed Tom to be multidimensional and versatile and, and Tom guards literally four or five different spots on the court. His best position at the next level is the point. And, uh, uh, but his versatility has, caught, it has been allowed him, uh, has, has come through the weight room. Now, in no way do I want to, to, to uh, 
uh, cheapen the effort that he has put in on the court. And, and he was a young man that, that uh, couldn't shoot, didn't make threes, and, and everything was, uh, uh, he was a 50% free throw shooter as a freshman. Well, 19 of 20 in, on Friday night and 7 of 7 today, and the, the work that that young man has put in, he's, he's made himself one of the elite players in, in college basketball. And, uh, and, and that's a tribute all to, to, his, to his work ethic. And, and, uh, uh, and I don't even talk about the mental because that young man watches more film and prepares better than any player I've ever been around. Continuing with questions for Coach Underwood. If you have a question, please raise your hand. All the way to the right, all the way to the back. Brad, it's Kevin Gore from Nacogdoches. Maybe, I don't think y'all scored the last minute and a half or minute 40. And maybe talk about y'all's offensive edge. Uh, execution, uh, I think you're up 75 to 70. Just talk about your execution on offense down the stretch. Had to remind me of that, didn't you? Um, we, we were putting the ball in Tom's hands. And um, uh, give them credit because they made the stops that they needed to make. And, and the one thing that we were going to do was uh, uh, have him make a pass, have him make a, make a shot, or have him get fouled. And uh, uh, again, they came up with the plays, and, and uh, uh, it was no different than, than what we did the other night against West Virginia. We late, we put the ball in Tom's hands, and, and I'll do it again every single time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna to uh, live and die with that young man, and, and then we uh, uh, need one to go or a defensive rebound. Continuing with questions for Coach Underwood. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll send the microphone in your direction. There's one just to the left of the aisle. Patrick, come up a little bit. We're going to use the right side microphone. Roger Sherman, SB Nation. Coach, it had been about a month and a half since you guys even played a game that was decided by less than 10 points. Um, what was it like down the stretch? What was your team's mentality late? Oh, I think they were pretty confident. I mean, I, I, the one thing that our team knows how to do is win. And uh, I don't think there was any, any question. I think we were all pretty focused and dialed in. We knew uh, our staff on our bench. We knew when we had, uh, you know, foul to give late. We knew when, uh, uh, you know, we had talked about what situation we were going to do. We were going to run and jump, try to get the ball out of Jackson's hands. Uh, we were going to do that off of uh, the Farrell kid. We had talked about all of that stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, again, it was, it was trying to exploit, uh, uh, and, and Jackson's tremendous. He, was, he was, um, made big plays and does what a, what a pro guard should do. But he uh, had a couple tough shots, and, uh, but we were, we were poised. We were, we were right there, and, I mean, it was, uh, we haven't had many close games uh, in, the, in the last month and, until, the, you know, until we got here, but uh, uh, we, we work on those situations quite often. We have time for one or maybe two more questions for Coach Underwood, if there are any. Any further questions? There's one on the left. One over here. Uh, Coach Chris Barca, SNY. Off the court, what are you going to miss most about oh. Thomas? He's a better kid than he is a player. And, and that's what I'll miss. He's funny. He's smart. Um, this is what this is about. He's everything that this is about. It's relationships. It's people. It's, it's a student athlete with two degrees. It's a student athlete who made himself great. How do you not fall in love with a kid like that? And we use the term love a lot in our program. And, and he's got a wonderful family. There's not enough adjectives to say what I feel about that young man. And uh, uh, he's going to go make it in whatever endeavor he, he chooses beyond basketball, with basketball, um, whatever. I love that kid to death. Is there a final question for Coach Underwood? If there is, please raise your hand. Thank you very much, Coach Underwood. Thank you.
The Stephen F. Austin locker room should be open for another 15 minutes or so. The Notre Dame locker room is open as well. We'll be joined in just a moment by student athletes from Notre Dame, VJ Beecham, Zach August, and Rex Pfluger, as well as head coach Mike Bray. The student athletes that do not join us here in the main interview room are available right now in the Notre Dame locker room, probably for the next 15 or 20 minutes. We'll let you know as soon as we can what the timing is like on that. Ladies and gentlemen, we're joined now by head coach of the Fighting Irish, Mike Bray, as well as student athletes VJ Beecham, Zach August, and Rex Pfluger. The remaining Notre Dame student athletes are available right now in the Notre Dame locker room. We'll ask Coach Bray to make an opening statement, then we'll take questions first for the student athletes. Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? That was unbelievable. God, that was fun, and certainly I'm very proud of our group because it didn't look very good for us. Um, but I think both nights here, Friday and Sunday, we showed some great character to kind of believe we could finish it, and uh, we did. So uh, Stephen F. Austin is fabulous, and they're so well coached. Um, they're just a heck of a team. We beat a heck. We beat a really good team today. We'll open up to questions for the student athletes first, and the first one's on the right toward the back, Mike. Mike Picaro, New York Post. Zach, last year you guys took Kentucky to the final seconds and got a lot of kudos for the way you did that. It was a little strange between kind of being almost on the exact opposite here today. I mean, you were the guys that, you know, were being forced to the last second and you guys wind up winning. Is that a little surreal in a way to be on, the, on both ends of it? Yeah, I mean, um, it's an amazing experience. It's been great. Um, you know, it was a, a little scary ending, uh, but, you know, we pulled out in the end and executed and did what we had to do. Continuing with questions for the student athletes, there's one on the left side of the room for Chris. Did you ever think your first bucket Rex would be uh, to send you guys to the Sweet 16 like that? Pretty good timing. Yeah, I didn't expect that to be honest. I just crashed the board. I, I thought Zach was going to make that last layup, but you know, coach always emphasizes going to the board hard, especially in situations like that, and it just turned out we're the best for us. Continuing with questions for the student athletes, we have one just to the right of the aisle toward the front for Len. Len Robbins, New York Post, Rex. Have you ever had that sort of dream that most kids have of making the shot in the big game? And if so, was it a tipping? Uh, yeah, I've definitely had that dream, but I didn't expect it to be a tipping. Uh, I actually had a similar experience where I missed it in my high school career, and I've always wished I got that back. So now that this has happened, it's made up for it. All the way to the right and all the way to the front. Sure. For Rex, just describe the feeling of tipping in the game-winning basket in an NCAA game. Uh, can't really explain it because it still hasn't hit me. It'll probably hit me tomorrow sometime. Uh, but it's been, it's been great. It wasn't just one play that won us the game. I think it was an overall effort, rebounding, hustling, and it was just, like I said, an overall uh, impact on the game by my, my whole team. Toward the back, on the right. Andrew Rosario, New York Beacon. Guys, you guys are down five late. What's going through your minds at that point? Let's have uh, VJ take that first, then Zach, then Rex. Um, you know, we feel like we can win any game, no matter what situation we're in. You know, we've been in games, we've been down 20, down 15, you know, late in the second half, and we just always feel like we can win the game. So we were down five, but we felt like we were going to find a way to pull through. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I agree. Um, it's just really game situations. You know, we emphasize and practice that a lot in practice. I um, mean, really, it was just came down to what team could execute to win the game. And, uh, you know, we stepped up and did that. And Rex? Uh, just to re reiterate what these guys said, uh, just 
we have a bunch of in-game situations in practice, and I think that prepared us for the last two minutes. Next question is toward the front on the right. Len. Len Robinson, you know, Post Rex. If I can just follow that, um, the shot that you didn't make in high school, what kind of shot was it? Was it a championship game? Just fill us in. It was a semifinal in the CIF. Uh, it was a tip in two, same as that kind of situation, and I missed it, and it, uh, we ended up losing that game. So it was nice to get this one. Continuing with questions for the Notre Dame student athletes, if there are any, just raise your hand. Any further questions for the student athletes? We'd like to thank and congratulate VJ, Zach, and Rex. They're going to head back to the locker room right now, which is still open for the next 10 minutes or so to take your questions. We'll now open things up for the first question for Coach Bray, and we have one to the right toward the back with Mike. Mike McCarron, New York Post. Mike, uh, just follow up what I asked Zach. I mean, last year in March, you had to walk over to Coach Cow and shake his hand, and while well, your heart was breaking, no doubt, because you know how, how, how much your kids have fought, kind of almost exactly the opposite effect here. Can you just talk about your perspective on both those feelings? <clears throat> yeah, no, you're right. That's how it ended for us, and you know, you're so proud of your group, but. Um, you know, when you play, when you coach and play in games like this, when you coach in games like this, it's exhausting. You know, I mean, I mean that in a very positive way. It's, you know, you, you're really into it. So uh, uh, I'm really proud of our group because um, we could have found ways not to figure it out. But this group's really kind of had an interesting vibe about them. And there's some real mental toughness with them that, uh, that we benefited from. All the way back to the right. Andrew Rosario, New York Beacon. Coach, how long do you relish this victory before you start looking forward to the next game? Oh, I'm going to enjoy it for a while. We don't play till Friday. I'm gonna, we're going to really enjoy this. We'll have plenty of time to prepare um, that we don't play till Friday. But, yeah, I, I just hope – I mean, both games here, you know, were great games, hard-fought games, great for ratings. Um, but I hope our group is coming out really confident. We have found ways to win uh, two tough ones. And – Something you want to just keep riding this time of year. All the way on the right side, Josh. Uh, Josh Newman, Asbury Park Press. When you have local guys like Farrell uh, and Steve Astoria, local guys, you know, people are asking for tickets, they're home. How much more difficult does that make things on the kids? You know, those two guys are pretty mature, <clears throat> and I think they handle that with grace and, and uh, understand. Uh, you know, Steve's a veteran, and Maddie is two years in the program. If it was a freshman, going back home. I'd be a little more worried about that. But um, those guys will be excited to be in Philly. We're working I-95. It was the ACC tournament. And yeah, we're, we're just working I-95 right now. On the right side of the aisle, Len. Len Robbins, New York Post. Mike, when you have a player like Rex who comes out of a program, the, way, the one that he came out of, um, how much does that factor into him being in the right place at the right time? That's what we loved about him, Len, you know, coming from the modern day program, Gary McKnight, heck, and I can relate because I played for a similar guy and was in the DeMatha program, you know, a great high school program, well-coached kids, they believe they're going to win. Um, that was a, probably got us over to hump where we decided, let's, let's get this guy. And he has, since we got him in the lineup, and it started in Cameron with how he played in Cameron to help us get that win, guarding, doing tough stuff. You know, his athletic ability, he bounces around. I mean, he, he does stuff like that in practice all the time, so it's not kind of out of left field. All the way to the back and all the way to the right. Andrew Rosario, New York, um, <laughs> New York Beacon. How, Mike, how aware were you of the presence of the Fighting Irish fans the last two games? Oh, uh, our fans were fabulous here. And I, I can't believe a ven uh, 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 any site had better energy than this site. I watch games. There was great juice in this building, but I knew when, when I saw us flash up in Brooklyn, I was excited because I knew our people would be out, and they helped us, and they certainly helped us believe when we were down five with whatever it was left. To the left of the aisle, Jaden. Jaden Daly, Daily Dose of Hoops. Mike, after this, this also ties into Jay and the Villanova game earlier. After so many years of not getting out of the first weekend, you get a Sweet 16 now to back up the Elite Eight last year. How much more of a relief is it, and how encouraging is it that the program has come on and taken on? Yeah, I think it's own? really, you know, I was my biggest concern was, you know, last year was so special, and I didn't want this group, you know, trying to be an extension of last year. We had to coach them. They were an individual. But for them to live in the shadow of last year's team, 
and, and then find their own way and identity and get to this point, I'm really proud of them. They, they've been great. I was always concerned about our leadership, losing Grant and Connaughton. And Jackson, Vastoria, and August have exceeded my expectations, and that's why we're still playing. On the right side toward the back, Mike. Mike McCarron, New York Post. Mike, you talked in your opening remarks. You, you, you said emphatically how good that team was. I mean, you guys had to shoot 57% for the game. You guys out-rebounded them. I mean, sometimes you get this idea that a higher seed has to play, or you know, a better team, better seed has to play terribly to be in this kind of game. You guys had to play good to, to beat them. That's got to yeah. sp speak well for them and for you guys. I, uh, you know, they, I knew they'd be hard to guard. They, they, they run in their stuff and, and um, we, we did it enough, but God, they're really hard to defend and then they're hard to play against. We couldn't really run any of our motion. Everything was react to a double team. And I thought overall, we made fabulous decisions out of traps, making the extra pass, then driving it shooting it. We posted a couple times. Um, Demetrius and Matt Farrell were really good with the ball. And it was, you know, it's interesting as I was watching them beat West Virginia and we had not played yet, but I back of my mind, I said, if we're fortunate enough to advance, I'm glad I started Matt Farrell tonight because he's going to really need to be able to handle the ball and help Demetrius if we play them. And I, I thought Matt Farrell was fabulous. We have time for a couple more questions. Let's move to the left side with Chris. Uh, Chris Barca, SNY. VJ kind of talked about how, you know, they never lost their confidence late, but at least in your mind, about 35, 40 seconds left, you're down one, and Thomas Walkup, who's been so awesome all weekend, has the ball. I guess how worried are you that it's your last 45 seconds of the season? Well, when we went into that timeout, you know, we went two for one at the end of the game. And we had the same situation in a Kentucky game last year, and we didn't go two for one. And we said as a coaching staff, if this presents itself again, we're going two for one. And we were able to get Demetrius to the line to cut it to one. We knew if we played out the defense, we'd have plenty of time. There's no way you're calling timeout. There's a little bit of chaos going on. Let's use that to our advantage. D got to the hole. And then, as you tell guys, when you're down one, don't worry about an over-the-back call. <laughs> you know, you don't just everyone run to the backboard. There's no such thing you worry about going anybody, over anybody's back. ZA and Rex were fabulous there. But I think it, it's a game situation, as they mentioned, that we practiced when we came back this year because I kicked myself. We should have done that in Cleveland. And, the, and we had a, it was set up that way. And again, we executed. I'm, I'm thrilled. In the back of the room on the right of the aisle, Ock. Uh, <clears throat> Jim O'Connell, Associated Press. Mike, uh, in a big picture way, you've kept the ACC going here and uh, you've had a heck of a tournament. Uh, have you been able to watch the other ACC games and what do you think of them? I have. I'm really proud of our league. Uh, I think now this league is with the year, this year it's playing out to be the best league. And remember, I came from that league called the Big East when we were by far the best league and had this kind of depth and number of NSA tournament caliber teams. But it has and I know if Syracuse gets in, that would be six in the Sweet Has that ever happened before? It, would that be a record, six from one league in the Sweet 16? It's, um, it's unbelievable and further validates, you know, how hard our league was and how proud I was that we were 11-7 and seven in the four seed. We'll take that. We have time for one final question for Coach Bray, if there is one. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Oops. <clears throat> Notre Dame locker room is still open for a few more minutes. Five to six more, says Alan. Is it? Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Media Coordination Committee here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us here in the main interview room all week and weekend long. Safe travels to the Sweet 16 and beyond to Houston.